Hello students. Let's start with the civics. Chapter number seven, Rural Livelihoods. The aims and objectives of this chapter are the livelihood in the rural India. Students in this chapter will be learning this chapter with the help of three stories. So there are the first story, the story of Tulsi. Second story is the story of Sekar and the story of Aruna and the Parivalan. We'll also learn about the terrace farming in the Nagaland. So it is a very easy chapter class. So there are three stories as I've already told you that there are three stories in this chapter. So we will understand with the help of story that how the people of the rural areas live, right? So let us start with the chapter. So as you know that when we live in a different regions, the work of the people is different and what kind of plants, trees, crops they grew is also different and the priorities are also very different. So in this chapter, we will learn how people earn their living in the villages and the similarities in their life and what problems they are facing. So let us discuss about the work exists in the villages. So there are many kinds of work like many peoples are going to practice in the agriculture and the people who are not in the agricultural practice, they do non-farming practice, right? And the many peoples, they were providing services like blacksmith, nurses, teachers, washermen, weavers, barbers, cycle repair, mechanics, etc. And there were shopkeepers and the traders also who runs their shops like tea shop, grocery shop, cloth shop, fertilizers and the seed shop. And some are in the profession of construction workers and the lorry drivers etc. So let us understand the stories. So there are three stories in your chapter. Two are of Kalpattu village and the third story is based on the Kudukat village. With the help of these stories, you will understand the life and the livelihoods of the people in the village. Let us understand first about the Kalpattu village. The people of this village do many kinds of work and this village is surrounded by the low hills and the main crops which is grown here is paddy which means rice and the maximum family earns through agriculture. So there are some coconut groves and mango orchards, orchards, coconut, cotton, sugarcane and plantain. They are also grown here. So let us start with our four first story. So here is a lady who lives in the Tamil Nadu named Tulsi. So she worked on an agricultural land of a person who named Ramalingam. Ramalingam is a farmer who is having 20 acres of paddy fields in the Kalpattu village. Tulsi was used to work on a paddy fields before her marriage also. But now Tulsi finds bending, right? So their work hours is from 8.30 to 4.30 p.m. 8.30 in the morning to 4.30, right? So as the Tulsi has grown older, she finds bending for a long hours with his feet in her water. She is getting very older. She is now, what she is now feeling, she is now feeling very painful. So class, the wife of Ramalingam named Puruthama, she is going to supervise the workers, right? But their job was not permanent. The job of the persons who work in the agricultural land, they are, are not permanent. 
so generally there were all who called in the fields four times so basically they were called in the field at four times in a year first to prepare the saplings then for transplanting the paddy then after for weeding and finally at the time of harvesting ramalingam pays rupees 40 per day to their labor but still they worked as it is provided dependable work every year now let us understand one more thing about the tul tulsi's life tulsi's personal life right so her husband name raman and he is also a laborer they don't have own agricultural land raman sprays pesticides during the transplanting season and where there is no work on the farms then they find work outside like they load sand from the rivers or stone from the quarry nearby raman also helps in getting the groceries for the house tulsi also does all these tasks at home like cooking cleaning washing clothes etc and some other works tulsi does like she goes in the forest to collect firewood and fetches water for their home tulsi and raman has school going daughters one of them fall ill last year and taken to the hospital in the town so they need to borrow money from the ramalingam for her treatment and sell their cows so what did we learn from the story so first is extra work poor families in the rural areas often spend a lot of time every day collecting firewood getting water and gazing their cattle even though they do not earn any money from these activities they have to do them for the household the family needs to spend time doing this at they are not able to survive on the little money they earn second thing which it was the agricultural labors nearly 2/5 of all rural 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 families they are agricultural laborers in the country there are some who have small plots of land while others like tulsi are landless the third one is seasonal work not being able to earn money throughout the year forces people in many rural areas to travel long distance in search of work this travel or migration take place during a particular season let us understand more about the life of ramalingam ramalingam family owns the land and in addition they owns a rice mill also they have their own shops of seeds pesticides etc for example uh, sorry for the rice mill they used to uh, what they are going to do for the rice mill they use their own money and some amount they borrow from the government bank the rice which they produce in the mill is sold to the traders first in the nearby towns and that is a good source of income the second story is of seker seker is a small farmer he is having 2 acres of land his entire family works in the field and when the work load increases he takes the help of other small farmers seker took the seeds and fertilizers as a load from a trader he set a deal with the trader to sell his paddy at a lower price 
Sekar get at least 60 bags of paddy from his field. Some of he will sell to the trader and rest will be used at his home for his food. But these rice last only for the eight months. So he needs to earn money more to buy the foods for the remaining months. Right. So for extra income class, what he do? He works in a Ramalingam's rice mill. He also has a cow whose milk he is going to sell to the milk cooperative. And in this way, he earns some extra money. So class, what do you, what did we learn with this story? So first thing is about the debt. Very often farmers like Seeker, they need to borrow money to purchase basic things like seeds, fertilizers and the pesticides. Often they borrow this money from the money lenders. If the seeds are not of good quality or pets attack them, there can be a major crop failure. The crops can also be rained if the monsoon does not bring enough rain. With, the, with this, it happens farmers sometimes are unable to pay back their loans. For the family to survive, sometimes they may have even to borrow more money. Soon the loan becomes so large that no matter what they earn, they are unable to repay. This is when we can say that they are caught in the debt. In some areas, this has also resulted in many farmers committed suicide. So with the help of these stories, you get an idea about the profession in the rural India and what problems they are being faced by the people. We are starting with the topic that is terrace farming in the Nagaland. There is a village in the Nagaland called Shizami, which is in fake district. People belong to Chakisan community and they do terrace cultivation. It means the land on a hill is made into flat plots and carved out in the steps. The side of each plot are raised in order to retain water and it allows water to stand in the field, which is good for the cultivation of rice. The people of Shizami have their own individual fields and they all work together in each other's field. They make a group of six to eight peoples and they eat together after finishing their work. And in this way, they go for the several days until the work is completed. Next is agricultural laborers and small farmers. So in India, nearly out of two, nearly two out of every five rural families are agricultural labor laborer families so all of them they depend on the work they do not they do in order people's fields to earn a living many of them are landless and others may own very small plots of land in the case of small farmers like saker their land is barely enough to meet their needs in india 80 percentage of the farmers belong to this group let us move further so 20% of India's farmers are large farmers. They cultivate most of the land in the village. A large part of their produce is sold in the market. Many of them have started other business such as shops, money lending, trading, small factories, etc. Let us see the other works which people used to do in the village. Apart from farming, Many people in rural areas, they depend upon the collection from the forest, animal husbandry, dairy products, fishing, etc. For example, in some villages in central India, both farming and collection from the forest are important source of livelihood. Collecting maua, tendua leaves, honey to be set traders is an important source of additional income. And for some families, selling milk to the village cooperative society or taking milk to the nearby town is the main source of livelihood. In the coastal areas, we find fishing villages. 
Next is Pudubed village. Class, there is a village named Pudubed, which is near the Kalpattu village. And here the people earn money by fishing. Their houses are very close to the sea. Men catch the fish and the women, they are going to sell that fishes in the local market. They started their work in the morning at 7 o'clock. The third story is of Aruna and the Fari villain. Aruna and her family lived in Pudupit. Aruna's husband is Pali Fari villain. Aruna's husband, her brother and her brother-in-law, they all go together to the sea in their catamaran and Aruna keeps some fish aside as a food for the family. And the remaining fish are being sold in the market to the person who gave more money. Now, with this, we understood about the work of Aruna and the Fari women. Now, let us discuss about their money management, how they manage the money. Right. So, after selling the fish, there was a division of money between four peoples. First is for the Pari Velen, second for the brother, third for the brother in law, and the last, fourth one is for the equipments which they use, like cat, catamaran, engine, fishing net, etc. As the catamaran, engine nets are of Arunas and her husband. So they get the fourth share. Aruna and Parivalan took a loan from the bank for the for these equipments and which will help these equipments they could go far into the sea and they caught the better fish. So the women who buy fish in the Pudupet carry them in the basket to be sold in nearby villages. Even the traders also buy fish from here and the auction of the fishes ended up by the noon. In the evening, all of them untangle and repair their nets and they went out for the sea again in the early morning at 2 a.m. Every year, about four months, they cannot go to the sea. Why? Because this is when the fish breed is going on, which means the new fishes are coming. So class, at that time, they borrow money from the traders to survive. And later on, they are forced to sell the fish to the traders to repay the loan and they are not able to do the auction. So these are the lean months for them. And it was very difficult for them to survive during these months. And even sometimes they have to suffer because of the natural calamities like tsunamis. So this was the basic lifestyle of the people who used to practice fishing. So what we have understood, what are the basic livelihoods of the people in the rural areas are, some people work on the farms while some are practicing non-farm activities. So the persons who are involving on the farms, they need to do such works like preparing the land, sowing, weeding, and the harvesting of the crops. The crops which are grown, they all are depend on the nature and on the seasons as well as. And therefore, their work is also seasonal. And the same goes in the profession of fishing. But still, there are some differences and similarities are there in their work. Like many people, they work as laborers. Most of the farmers grow crops for their own use and even to sell in the market. Even many families, they need to borrow the money for the survival when there is no work available for them. And the farmers, they have to sell their crops at very low price to the traders to repay the loan amount. With this, we know that the three things about them. First, how people are able to survive or earn, it will depend upon the land which they cultivate. Second, in the different region of the country, people grow different 
crops and the third most important wherever they are in the country the life situations and the problems they face are very similar so their lifestyle will be difficult but their living conditions are very similar so class here we end up with this chapter i hope you all have understood this chapter very well thank you bye bye